Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about kind of a quality of life thing. Tolarian Community College was very proud that, so Brian from Tolarian Community College was very proud that GP New Jersey was sold out. However, the quality of GP New Jersey or Magic Fest or whatever you want to call it has substantially decreased to all time low. This is for sure an all time low. The top eight played in regular sheet seating, no coverage, no reporters. Look at how cheap those tables look. I mean, you can find better tables at Walmart than those tables. And then there's a black. I mean, this is the top eight. There's no crowds. There's no excitement. There's no cameras. There's no streaming. There's no coverage. And this is what you have to look forward to. I think eventually GPs will be phased out uh, in lieu for Magic Arena. MTG Arena will probably replace GPs. I mean, that is just what it will be. This picture really makes people want to try this game, laugh out loud. So Tolarian Community College is correct and he is very proud that this event sold out. But the quality of event, uh, quality of life for the participants have increasingly gone down. The prizes have been stifled. And to be quite honest, the prizes were not that good to begin with because they are, for, it's like gambling, right? It's not like additional prizes are being handed out. Now, the fee to attend a GP event has been going up. I'm the fella sitting all the way on the left. I wanted to top eight a Grand Prix for the last 20 years. It happened and it felt very anticlimactic. Is there a source about the no coverage? GP Vancouver was the same. There's no stream coverage, only articles written up after the event. So one Rudy Alpha Investments can, just with one camera, I think it's his phone, he can produce maybe a hundred videos in one event. Are you telling me that Wizard of Coast, their entire team, cannot do what one Rudy can do? And the answer is yes. Um, so should they hire this Rudy individual to film it? I think so. I think it's actually very beneficial. Uh, we're talking about millions, if not tens of millions of views per GP. Fly him out there, give him a stipend, give him some tacos, and it's a happy Rudy. But apparently that's not good enough. Imagine that one dude who played Magic for the last 20 years waiting for his one opportunity to top eight a GP. And then he's playing on, I mean, it's just awful. If you ever ask why Alex Bertini can win so much by cheating, just take a look at this picture. From the quality of the judges, from the quality of the play mats, I mean, it's just so obvious to me that this is not a good event. Um, if this is the premier finish for the event, I remember one of the GPs, someone finished in top eight, and they chose to go home to catch their plane because that was better expected value, and the GP went late. The winner of GP New Jersey didn't even get a trophy. And this is a typical Tolarian Community College mindset, as you're going to see, is someone tweets that the winner doesn't get a trophy. Then someone tweets back saying, no, I'm positive he got a trophy. I saw it with my own eyes. And the winner is like, nope, I did not get a trophy. So here we have a tweet. Taking donations for Wizards Magic to commission a trophy. Winner of GP in New Jersey, MTG New Jersey, MF New Jersey. What does MF New Jersey mean? And my max. So that's the winner of GP New Jersey. His friend is tweeting that there is no trophy and he's trying to start a GoFundMe for health insurance. No, that's not. <laughs> that's too mean. And then Billy Mitchell says, wait, he didn't get a trophy. And then Caleb, he did. I'm fairly sure. Did Caleb actually go to this event? Probably not. It's just these random people who just say these things to be confrontational. No, I didn't laugh out loud. So thanks, Caleb. Thank you for your uh, amazing insight.
I mean, I get these comments all the time. You don't know what you're talking about. I was there. <laughs> okay. I think the winner would know if he got a trophy or not. Maybe Wizard Coast wanted him to realize the real trophies are all the friends he made along the way. Narrator, he was playing control. <laughs> so, fascinating, uh, truly fascinating turn of events. I will say that sometimes reality is more... So here we have the biggest... MTG celebrity, very proud that Wizard of Coast sold out or Magic Fest sold out a very event. Uh, Channel Fireball did a good job, everyone's clapping. And then the final finality of the event is the top eight on what seems to be like a homeless area playing Magic on a black tablecloth. And the winner not even receiving a trophy. Possibly not receiving their money either, who knows. I guess they don't do the giant checks that they give to Alex Bertini's, right? Because Hey, who cares about this random dude? And then you have people con saying that he did receive the trophy. <laughs> For no reason. There's no reason to tweet that. I mean, it, it's so ridiculous. He didn't receive a trophy. Why are you saying he did? Like, And you saw... So, uh, moving forward, Limited Grand Prix will receive a Subway gift card of $3.45. They should mail him one. Really unforgivable. Having something tangible for winning is so meaningful. I'm a nobody who spiked a GP a few years back. My trophy is one my top three most valuable possessions. So, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, this guy, there, you have people playing 20 years to try to win a trophy. And, oh, there's no trophy. Oh, there's no top eight coverage. Oh, no one cares who you are. This is how you storytell, and this is why people are not interested in the Magic Pros, because no one knows who they are. No one knows what their story is, that they've been playing for 20 years, and this is, you know, there's so many great storytelling opportunities that league, that an eSport like League of Legends does, where you have teams that tell the stories of the players. You know about Poe Belter and his high IQ, I think his IQ is over 200. You know about Double Lift and how he you know, left, ran away from home. His parents disinherited him. And then he posted on Reddit, like, you know, he needed a place to stay. So he stayed with this dude called Travis Gafford. And then now Travis Gafford is a leading individual. These people are Lily Pichu or Pokemon, Pokemon, who does the Fortnite now. I mean, they all have interesting stories that were covered. And Magic has no story. There's no personality in Magic that you really know. I mean, if you were to, besides that they won a GP or a few GPs, what do you actually know about the personal life of one LSV? Because what I could tell you right now would shock you and amaze you as to personal life. And that's what it is. People in e League of Legends teams, they'll blog their home, they'll blog their life, they'll stream so when a streamer streams, it's not necessarily because, they, and they get popular, it's not because that they are the most, the best Magic player out there. It's because they have a good personality and people like it. So here you have Tularean Community College egging on on Sleeve Media, who of course needs to respond to this because that is what happens. And one of the um, curious cases, in, one of the really strange cases for me is... How strange it is for Magic to be where it is now. So back when I was younger, you had Mike Long standing on a table on a chair, and you did have some really amusing people. Now Mike Long was a cheater, as was David Williams. He was a cheater too. So you did have, you had Mark Justice was also a cheater. You have, but you had these big names, and they were pretty amusing. Like they it was there, there were storylines. The storyline was Mike Long is a villain and who can beat him. And along came John Finkel. And it was on ESPN 5 or 4, whatever it was, on ESPN 2. I remember the McCadian Mask tournament packs had the yellow advertising on like uh, the original ones. I love those ones because McCadian Mask was a really terrible set. But it, it showed that Magic was interesting enough to cover on ESPN. Now, Magic itself doesn't cover itself. Like, I mean, 
come on now, like think about this. Magic, Wizard of Coast has decided that it's not good expected value for their brand to cover these people at the highest tournament level. I mean, what else do you want me to say about that? Why would ESPN, why would any of these other organizations or shows or Hulu or Netflix, why would any of them be interested in covering Magic the Gathering when Magic the Gathering is not interested in covering itself or streaming or any of that? This is very good content. This is fantastic content and fantastic branding that if they were smart, they could make a lot of money doing this. But they're not. They're just wasting opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And people like Tulane Community College are so proud of them because could we sold out the event. No one cares. No one watches the event because even if people wanted to watch the event, it would not be possible because are you telling me that a YouTuber in New Jersey, if allowed and able to, would not want to live stream this event to get subscribers and Twitch followers and whatever they are interested in, Patreon donations, maybe set up a GoFundMe. Are you saying that somebody would not do this? It's one thing for Wizard of the Coast to choose not to do it. It's another thing for them to actively disengage from people like Rudy and Alpha Investments from doing it. Rudy's been very clear. He doesn't want to attend GPs anymore. That's bad. They should have incentivized him to attend GPs because the content he produces is good. And he produces lots of it. It's free advertisement, free content, free views, free, oh, hey, this is looks like a really cool magic fest. I want to go to the next one that, you know, because it looks fun. Right now, it doesn't look fun. It's eight dudes on a homeless table. To call it like a table for homeless is actually a, it's actually bad for homeless people because they probably use belly tables and that. Mm, let, let me put this, it's the cheapest table they could find. And then they put a black cover in it. This is the top eight of the premier event that the most people who are not magic pros can go to. You spend 20 years working up to this event only to be hosed. <laughs> And when you win this event, they couldn't even buy the trophy for you. They couldn't even pay the dude $15 down the store to make a trophy for you. That's what Magic of the Gathering is. And that's why Tularean Community College is absolutely wrong on, you know, should we celebrate Magic Fest? He was paid by Channel Fireball to go to these events. Maybe if we didn't pay him and the Manasaurs and... The man of source's wife and all these other individuals who are like we can contest whether or not they bring more people to events i would say no but some people might say oh i i've gone to go see the event for him if we took all the hotel money and the plane tickets and the food and we bought a really nice trophy and then we could have a nice reddit post of the winner with a trophy of some type i think that would be great i think that would be fantastic but that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is we're going to continue to pay these e-celebrities who mainly play Hearthstone. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> the Hearthstone is not doing great right now. And that's why a lot of these people are bailing on it. And then they're trying to, like Andrew Yanyuk, they're trying to do MTG Arena now because they realize that Wizard of the Coast is going to spend a lot of money in this platform. And they already have. And I see the... I see them bailing. I can predict in the next five years, Brian Kibler will come back to Magic Arena. Right now, he is, quote, a Hearthstone player, but the views are down. The subscribers are down. I mean, I don't know what's happening in that game. I don't play that game myself, but things are, the numbers don't lie. They, are, they seem to be down. Now, maybe because I don't play the game, I don't actually know uh, if that is true. That's like, is there a reason numbers are down? Is there like, you know, more tournaments or something? I don't know. But at the end of the day, the GPs, um, it's just an embarrassment. A, it's embarrassment. The top eight itself is an embarrassment. I mean, that picture summarizes everything you need to know. And B, it's an embarrassment for Tolarian Community College to be proud of these things, proud of GPs. I don't think any Magic player is proud of this top eight with a black tablecloth 
over the cheapest things with no coverage. And on top of all this, the winner doesn't even get a trophy. The winner doesn't even get a trophy. I mean, come on now, guys. Bye, guys.